Alleluia. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are we glad to be here this morning? Yes. Alleluia. We thank God once again for this opportunity. And uh, I believe that uh, today we might have a little bit of time break. Definitely we should. And uh, we'll see what God will do among us. Amen. Amen. Anyone believe in God for a miracle this morning? Yeah. Let me rephrase it. Is there any expectation this morning? Yeah. Is any desire to see something happening in your life this morning? Yeah. Do you believe that there is a door somewhere there that can open for you. Let me rephrase it again. Are you in pain? Are you in tears? Are you struggling with life? If so, there is a way. There is a way out. There is a way out. Let them attack you by one way. There is someone who's going to scatter them by seven ways. Let them mock you. They will be there to applaud you. Let them reject you. They will be the one saying, come. We've seen something great, something marvelous about you. You are the one who will take us through. It is written that is the one who wipes away our tears, God and Jesus. So this morning, if only you can believe, brothers, we are different. We have different genders here. We have females and we have males. But before God, there is no male, there is no female. We are into his likeness. Strip away your title. Strip away your heaviness. Strip away your worries. It is the door. It is the way. It is the truth. It is life. Anyone who comes bumping in God, Jesus, oh man, he will never be the same. A demonic of gatherer, we know the story. This guy bumped into Jesus, something shifted in the atmosphere. Are you looking for something to be shifted in the atmosphere? Trust God. Somebody help me say, trust God. Oh, hold your neighbor's hand right now. Can you hold your neighbor's hand right now? If you don't have a neighbor, move to where there is a neighbor and hold them. Tell them this, there is a shift in the spirit. There is a shift in the spirit. Amen. God bless you. But I feel like praying right now because there is something God is about to release this morning. And I believe that there is grace this morning. We are carrying on with the subject, the title that we studied last week, and it is a subject that is about power. Power has three ways to be manifested as for us Christians. There are many ways, but there are just three ways that are more important in our lives to experience power. If you want to experience power, brothers, sisters, there is no other way. If not by faith, if not by miracle, if not by healing. So if you want to experience a tremendous shift, there are people in the Bible they were once barren for 90 years 
hope against all hope. Were there no mockeries? Mockeries was there. Were there no laughter? Laughter was there. Were there no shame to be wealthy, to have millions, to, to have workers, yet you don't have somebody who's going to be called and heard. So if in our current days you say your money is going to be given into charity. Yes, there are people who have that heart to give to charity. But it is biblical to pass wealth to your generations after generations after generations. That is the biblical law. There is no change whatsoever about it. You don't, you don't try to pretend, no. The only way, the biblical only way to keep wealth from one generation is from one generation to the other generation. So the father has to pass it, has to pass the baton. But I always pray for us, Africa. May we not die without leaving anything behind, without leaving any legacy, without leaving some substance behind. Our sons and our foresters, the sons and the sons to come, they will inquest, they will inquire one day about their parents and say, Dad, what did you leave behind for us? Brothers and sisters, there is no other way to pass the baton to the next generation if you don't have the means currently. And that is going to happen as soon as there is a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. I pray for you to get this thing, to grab these things and to pray over them because if you miss it, generation will judge us. Countries and countries, today we are having leadership crisis because our forefathers, you know, present leaders, they failed to pass the baton correctly. Ooh, I felt it in the atmosphere. If today we are struggling as African because our leaders, they fail to be accountable, they lack integrity. They lack wisdom. And today we are suffering because somebody missed it. And I pray you should be the one missing it. And I say, do not miss it. Faith. Faith. It's something important. The spiritual gifts of faith is exhibited by one with a strong and shakable confidence in God, His Word, and His promises. Somebody who wants to see something happening in the atmosphere, he has to have a strong faith and shakable have confidence in God, in His Word, and His promise. Now, I love this scripture that we have over there. It is a well-known scripture. Listen to what Paul says. I fight the fight of, you know, I fight the fight of faith. Paul was explaining what had happened. Brothers, you have to understand that Paul, even though he had all the gift of the Spirit, somehow he was a human being. He lacked some substance as well. He lacked some element. But remember, he said, I fight a good fight of faith. So for you to understand, number one, faith, you have to understand that it's something we have to fight for. Faith is something we have to fight for. It's not just something, you know, you put, say, ah, I'll touch it later. No. It's something you have to fight for. Something that you have to struggle for. 
something that you may allow even the people mocking you, let them mock me, but I've got something I have to catch up. They might reject me, I don't care, but as soon as my eyes are fixed on that thing, I am unmovable. I am unshakable. I cannot waver or change my direction. I am focused. Brother, let the wind be winds. Let the, the, the hurricane be hurricane. But I am unshakable. Even though you push me off the track, I'm going to fall down. But my eyes are fixed on the invisible God. The unshakable God. Is there permanent forever for you? Now, there are many multiple types of faith in the Bible. There should be over 50, uh, 50, 14 different kind of, uh, of faith. The easiest one is the faith that is common for every believer. And that faith, we call it, it is saving faith. And remember, we are saved by faith, by grace. And that is the gift God is passing to you. You are saved by grace. And it is the faith that is encouraging, encouraging you to shift. Brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth. It's not easy to live something that you are used to. It's not easy. But it is a faith that makes us seeing the invisible become invisible. It is faith that is seeing it's moving from unrighteousness to righteousness. It's faith that is taking us from something that is not good for something that is good. So we're transitioning by faith. I don't know how, but I remember I'm moving. I'm not stuck, but I am moving. And that is the common ground we call faith for all the believers. Anyone from Japan who believes in God is going to go to heaven. Anyone from Kazakhstan believing in God is going to go to heaven. Anyone from China believing, from the US believing, anyone, if just you say, I believe in God, then. <laughs> You've been accounted as a righteous by faith. God knows you that you are my righteous. You've moved from what you used to know as a norm to what is not familiar to you. Because some of us, we, were, we didn't know righteousness. We were brought in this world and we believe that the way we do things is the common way. But yet, God is telling us to move from one level to another level. From unrighteousness to righteousness. So you keep believing that there is a way for me in God. And that is a faith which is God requiring from all the believers. Do we want to know you as a Christian? You should have faith. Faith in God. Faith in God. This is the number one common ground, faith. The number two, faith. There is a faith that we call increased faith. There is an increased faith. The increased faith is there. So it is like right now, I've got something to pass on. Um, whenever I... I, I Put my fingers on you, it just comes right away. You never know what God can do for you. Mama, was yes. <coughs> just follow me careful. Stand over there. My brother, come. Yes.
last one, my brother. Come. I'm not going to expose you. Don't worry. I'm not going to expose you. All right. Maybe you never know. Maybe you've been crying for these things. You never know. Listen. My question to you guys, what did I hand to these guys? Who knows what I've handed out? I know. Envelopes. Okay, thank you very much. That's the description number one. These are, they're holding envelopes. Am I right? Who knows what is inside of these envelopes? Nobody knows. Am I right? All right, maybe you may guess. Yeah, it's true. Let's see, who can guess? Who can guess? Who can guess? Be free, be free, be free in the Lord's presence. Who can guess? Yeah, done. Words. Word. Okay, it's great. Wrong. Well, wrong mouse. <laughs> Spoon. Blessings. Eh? Blessings. It's blessings inside. Blessings. 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 Yeah. Blessings in general. <laughs> okay. Money. Can we applaud for her? <laughs> Listen. All of them, they've been. They have needs, like you or not. There is no one who is sufficient here. They have need. All that they need is to exercise their faith. They didn't know that this is going to happen this morning. But they came to church like everybody. But not knowing that we're going to do whatever we're going to do now. And that is coming by. Am I talking to somebody? It is the step of faith. I'm coming to church by faith, not knowing what is gonna happen. Yet I have pro problems. My problems is for God to help me alleviate them. Maybe I need 10 rand. Maybe I need 20 rand. Maybe I need 50 rand. Maybe I need 100 rand. I've been fasting and crying out to God for 100 rand. So now, guess what? I'm coming here by faith. And I'm stepping by faith, not knowing that I'm gonna have a hundred rand. Isn't it? Can you see what faith can do? We walk by faith, not by sight. So most of the believers, whenever we walk by sight, we always get it wrong. For us to get it right, we have to be led by the Spirit. See, see? What is, what, how much is in the envelope? They're not going to come and beat you up to get the money, you know. <laughs> Just check, 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 check your envelopes. <coughs> how much is there? 100 rand. Okay. How much is in there? 20 rand. 10 rand. How much is in there? 50 rand. How much is in there? 10 rand. 10 rand. You said 20 rand, am I right? So, these guys, they have the benefits of coming, I mean, the benefit of coming to church produces result. It is your money. You may go. You may go. <laughs> can you see how faith can move dynamic in the atmosphere? Faith becomes a currency that you may trade with. It becomes an exchange to get the impossible become possible. So we have faith that is automatically, the number one we say, the measuring faith, I've already said, spoken about the other one, let me just go through, it's measuring faith, so that faith comes, is given to all men. Number two, growing faith. All the believers, they have to exercise a level of maturity. God is giving them the responsibility. You know, certain things, God is not going to perform everything for you. It's up to you to develop your talent, your faith, in order for you to receive something bigger. Don't tell me that, no, only you are blessed and what about us? How much faith do you have incurred in God for you to receive what I've received? All of us have received a common ground. Multiply. Work on it. Trade on it. Work on it. Trade on it. 
in face of it, run after. It's painful, but I have to run. Storm, no storm, I have to run. And those ones, they are sitting one we call great faith. This is just the faith that, you know, it, there is no way, but I just say, I, I can see the way. And the unwavering faith, even in the midst of whatever, I still hold on to God. Let me go for the another, another one. So, and there is a strong faith. That strong faith, you can say it's in the person. It is not moving. Still believing, I believe. God will see me through. I know I still, my son is dying. He's dying. Yes, I know. The doctors say that he's dying, but I believe that he's not going to die. The active faith is there as well. There is a genuine faith as well. I don't know where are you located now. The next one. <coughs> Common faith, as we said, the saving faith. And faith without root. So what? It's a lot to talk about. But this morning, I want to emphasize on one thing. The amount of faith that you have equal to the amount of result that you need. The amount of faith that you have equal to the amount of needs you result you need. You want to grow higher? Increase your faith. Paul said that I've run the race. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I fight the fight of faith. I fight the fight. And I'm still holding on to faith. So you can see from step one, step two, step three, he's still holding on. Things are not right, he's still holding on. Things are tough, he's still holding on. You know, where there is no way, he's still holding on. People mocking him, he's still holding on. He is the man who healed with just the eye prongs, the handkerchief. But yet he had a thorn in his body. He's still holding on to his promises. Now, there is what we call a special gift of faith. That is not common to everybody. That is God-given ability to man. It's different from the faith in general. Whatever we've said is different. This one becomes an ability from God. It is a unique letter. It is a gift that God is issuing, giving to somebody. To do what? To perform miracles. Now, the gift of faith, we found it, it's Daniel. Daniel is a beautiful illustration. As I said, faith, the gift of faith is a special supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit whereby a believer is empowered with a special faith and wonders, working miracles beyond the saving faith. He sees that as an opportunity for him to say, I've got this one, I've got this ability. Now that ability comes by grace. It's not just like, you know, you, you need to work on it. <laughs> it is given by God. It's like prophecy. God can give it to you. They are born prophet and they are made prophet. A born prophet, it doesn't force. It's, it's, it's been given that. It's born with the gift. There is no way you can take it away unless it sins. If he hasn't sinned, you cannot take it away. Or, or there is, you know, he may miss it if there is disobedience. But if he's still faithful to God, praying or not praying, he will prophesy. It is inside of him. 
He walks with it. He sleeps upon it. He eats upon it. He does everything upon it. It is inside of him. There is no way it can be torn from it unless it becomes disobedient. And there are prophets who are very prophets. I can take you through trainings. I can give you some you know, hints left and right and you will become a prophet. I pray this morning may the Spirit of the Lord overflow this room and give us such as ability to hold on unto God. This kind of faith, a special one, you cannot steal it from somebody. It is inside you. Now, this gift is so powerful. Now, learn from this. Because we don't have much time. Daniel was taken into the lion dens. Before I go there, let me say this. The special gift of faith works differently from the gift of miracles. The major one is faith is the, is the major. But the gift of a miracle becomes something else. Faith, the gift of special gift of faith is passive. Something that is in there. It is passive in there. You don't work, you don't show forth. You don't hope oh, I've got you in trouble time. You don't show forth that I've got the gift of you know special gift of faith. No. In troubles, you quiet. You sitting. They perspire against you. You don't justify yourself. That gift is working on your behalf. They throw you in the line then. You don't shout mother. You don't shout father. You don't shout uncle. You don't shout justice. You quiet because you are innocent. about that you are committed to God about that you love God so the gift of special gift of faith it is something that is a dynamic it is a quiet gift that I've never seen check all in the Bible all the people who had that gift of faith they were so quiet they took Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego throw them in the uh, in the fairies of fire. They never said anything. The Bible doesn't say much. It's quiet. But they were holding on to God promises. They never want to release it. They never want to detour from it. They keep quiet. Oh king, let it be known that even if you cast us into the fire, we will never change our position. My position is still on. No changeable thing. The second one example you can see in the Bible it is when Jesus was navigating with his disciples. Look, you may say it's Jesus, definitely it's Jesus. But look at him, he had a gift of faith. He slept quietly, but yet the people around him were in trouble. Everybody was running. Hey, help us, help us, who could? So you can see everybody is so touched. Taken by storm, surprises. You can see everybody panicking. But the gift of faith, thank you, Lord. I'm sharing God as the baby is saying, yeah, I'm sharing God is saying. My dad, right now, has a project. And that project is to go beyond what he has already established. And whatever you establish is God's hand. And that's why, let me say this Jesus, as man, anyway, the expectation that you have is for you to go, to grow.
bigger and bigger. That's the desire. But I'm hearing God is saying, God is going to make not only that business alone, there is another business that is getting opened up. There is another business opening up. So just that business opening up. But I see your wife having as well running another business. going to be two or three businesses in your house before the end of this year you will testify what the Lord is going to do with you before the end of uh, this year December is coming around the corner and I pray that things like that now this kind of gift of faith that God is giving to mankind it's a special one you see Paul and Peter, after he has been arrested and put in jail, we know all the story, or some of us know the story. Peter arrested, put in jail, because he did something right. And the following day, he was supposed to be killed. James was killed, and Peter was supposed to be killed as well. But look, I've got 16 soldiers guarding me. This is Peter in a cell. Fortifies prison all around the soldiers. Inside, you've got quadrillion. You've got 16 soldiers on both corners doing round shifts each and every hour for you not to escape because they say you're going to be killed. <coughs> now, listen, he had. He didn't pray much. The Bible doesn't say much about him praying. Father, I cast out demons. Touch this man. Defend me. I am innocent. I am. Oh, your sons, remember you say, I am Peter. On me, I am a rock. You will bleed your church. Don't, don't you dare to um, change your position, Lord. Don't you dare. Don't dare to, to let me die prematurely. I am you. Oh, you see, this man quietly sleeping in peace. Sleeping in peace. Knowing that there is somebody who's going to justify him. Yeah. The special gift of faith kicked him. It kicked him. The one who conspired against him was not informed. That the angel of the Lord will appear. Who? When you have the gift of faith, the special gift of faith, always remember you will not you will not be taken by surprises. No. You the one characteristic of those who have that gift, it is quietness all the time. In that moment, I am quiet. I am quiet. I am calm. I am waiting upon the Lord. The Bible does not teach us to wait upon the Lord. And those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. It's not just renewing our strength, but we fly too. We fly not like a, you know, a pigeon, but we fly like an eagle. A pigeon has a speed limit. An eagle, man, he goes against the huracan. He goes against the tornado. He goes against anything that comes his way. Why? Because he has the ability of the wings to mount up the wind and obstacles. When you sleep peacefully, remember the Lord is in charge. Is this morning a morning where God is in charge? Oh, it is indeed a morning where we are running left and right. I remember Eric when he was uh, just uh, preparing to get married. I looked at him at Plaza. Eric looked at me and said, Pastor, you don't know what is happening. My head is spinning. I have bills to cover. I have that to cover. I have this. And my mother-in-law, she said, the weather is the nice. And this, I said, man, hold on, on to God. It seems well with you. 
And guess what? It has been the best wedding I've ever officiated. Yay. When you wait upon God, it'll bring something back to you. When you wait upon God, shifts is coming. Look, Daniel didn't know that he will survive hungry lions. Men, have you ever breed a dog or dogs? I've got dogs. I've got Bugu. I've got German Shepherd. I've got Rodvana. These are vicious. It's true. I do have them. But not here. Not here in this. And these are vicious. Vicious beasts. Do not feed them for two days. You will see what they will do. They will attack you and they will <laughs> destroy one of your legs or whatever because they have a desire to be fed. Now what about a lion? It's not just one. It is multiple lions in a den. Men and females thrown in the dark den. Not being fed for some time perhaps. When competition becomes in, you know, when, have, you, have you seen documentaries when they throw um, a portion of meat to, to lions? Even if they are 20 days, you will see how they will fight for that portion of the meat. Now, what about you, human being, being cast into that situation? What would your reaction be? Daniel, we need the generations of Daniel. Amen. We need Lord, I pray, Lord God. Lord Father, if you had given it to Daniel, we of this time as well, we are available. We are available, Lord. Lord, use us like a Daniel generation where we stand in the midst of our trials and keep calm and said the Lord will do it. I don't know, but God will do it. It is tough, but God will do it. It's painful, but God will do it. They've been molesting me. I've been rejected. I've been violated. But God will do it. God will be my defender. God will change my story one day. A generation that holds on to God. A generation that is crying out to God for miracles, for change in the atmosphere. Something astonishing. That gift is not just passive most of the time. It is a gift that as well brings judgment. It brings judgment. The moment where somebody is tempering with ministering or blaspheming God, that gift comes in mightier and shifts things. It can bring judgment. It can bring destruction. We see that with Simon the magician. He wanted to temper with the things of God. And they hurl at him and say, be blind. And we saw that it came, literally the man became blind. Elisha, the people, the children, they were mocking of somebody, they were mocking, oh, you are a bold man, you are a bold man, you are a bold man. He looked and he felt bitter. Anger arose from his chest and he says, let the beast from the, 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 the world come and destroy you. And they did it. But I'm going to tell you, not to use it most of the time in the negative. Remember what I taught you last time? It is a dangerous gift. It can destroy lives. With God, we don't mean to destroy. We are there to uplift, to edify, to change, to love. Now, I'm closing in a few minutes. 
the gift of miracle the gift of miracles come in as a gift as well it works hand in hand with the gift of faith but the gift of miracle is active so you need to say something in order for it to come it is active it's connected with your beliefs with your faith with the word of God with God himself word and his promises they are active inside of you now you always have compassion over the cripple over the lame over the, the blind over the down over the sick over any other situation that is a you know, it has destroyed, paralyzed, crippled someone. It comes in as an active motion. You see, Peter was going to the temple called Beautiful. He went there. He was going from the house, from the chamber of prayer to the house called Beautiful. Synagogue prayer. Remember this gift. Remember this gift was inside of him. Number one, we saw Peter looking at the need of the God. The gift of miracle always remember looking for problems. Do we have problems in our church? Yes. We need that gift of miracles. It has to sense problems. It has to sense, it's not prophetic, but it senses problems. It's looking for problems. The truth of the matter, that gift does minister to the need, it caters to the need of the believers been given to the body of Christ to cater for our needs, be it personal, be it you know, uh, you know, community, be it a country, but we have a need, or a church organization, we do have needs. Now this gift works with the word spoken. He reached there as he was going, number one, he saw the man sitting there at the door. His mind is saying, God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Because the gift is inside of him, it has three powerful elements not to neglect. The number one element, this gift always, always restores. The gift of miracle restores. Does restore. This gift does restore. It when someone has that gift, automatically we see restorations coming. We don't see any other thing if not restoration. If a person was meek, if a person was quiet, if a person was broken legs, the gift is looking for restoration. The number two element, this gift always initiates. It is the gift that will initiate the move of God. I see you but yet I don't see the insights. But the gift that I have sees the insights. It really sets the way to get you out of whatever problem that you do have. It moves beyond that. That gift always strengthens faith around the people of God and brings 
the unbelievers to believe. I'm going to close in two minutes. Now, guess what? Peter walking, and then he sees a lame man, a crippled man, sitting there. Now, guess the gift. Remember, this guy is sitting there, he's looking for something. Am I right? The need of that guy was money. Am I right? Because he was looking at him, at them, intently, uh, believing that he's going to receive something. But the gift goes beyond money. And to search for the real need. Most of the time, believers, we do have needs, but we pretend. We push the first, you know, pretense to become the first need, and we left the need to become the last need. They ask you questions. Do you want to get well? No, Pastor. Yes, it's true, but I need first of money. Imali. Imali. But it's true. We're going to give you Imali. We're going to give you the Mullahs. But it's true. But man, you're going to still be crippled. Your, solo, your problem is not money. Your problem is that thing that is holding you down. So the gift comes in and initiates. I said, yep. Yeah. Let's move. Let's change the direction. Let's shift completely. And as you move completely, you see the person say, oh, standing up. Remember, this guy was a lay person. How can you walk if you've never been taught to walk? You can never walk if you've never been taught how to walk. Even the way I speak, somebody taught me. So the, the, there is always step of learning in life. That is normal. The first thing that Peter, when he looked at him, he said, silver and gold we do not have, but such as we do have, we give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and do what? And walk. So the gift brings the restoration, the ligament that was so um, stiff. The bones, the legs, where there was no strength. The muscles, they were stiff. But the authority of the spoken word of Peter brought restoration from the beginning. As God was intending for men to be created. He ordered what was at the beginning to be there, immediately right there, now. And the person who did not know how to walk, but for the first time, he stood up. Number one, before he stood up, they gave him their hands, Hold him, he stood up, and he said, walk. And the men start walking. So they initiate him, they took him by hand. There is no strength in the bodies, but the bone, the body that has strength, is passing unto you the strength. It's taking the pains away. The stiffness of the ligament and the muscles is being taken away. And then I'm giving you the freshness of muscles, of ligaments. Of how to walk and the guys start, start limping and he stood firm and stood firm and number three he started running huh. how can you run if you've never been taught how to run and I guess he was even faster than Peter because it's something marvelous wonderful never seen before he starts jumping and going into the church the last thing he went to the church to edify the believers, to edify the, 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 the guys who were praying there. The Bible says they were Jewish, the Israelites there in the temple praying. And suddenly they start praising God. 
celebrating. Guess what? That gift empowered those who were feeble yesterday. Say, if God can do it for him, he can do it for us too. Can we all stand up on our feet?